All right, we welcome everyone to this February 19th meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide, the, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values. And we appreciate the, your interest in the students of CISD. Okay, first things first. We're going to have Pledge of Allegiance from the students from Carroll Elementary, and I'm going to call you up. Christian Doak, Ulysses Maldonado, Evan Miller, Brendan Ott, Parker Davis, Kingston Washington, Kamarian Henry, Kimberly Avila, Carly Johnson, and Ruhi Dasi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there you go. 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 <laughs> this I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Just take over me. Yeah. Did you want to do that? No. <laughs> well, we're going to ask. Jeremy Dickerson from the CISD Business Office to lead us in a word of prayer. Please bow your heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity to lift up Course Can ISD, its board, its staff, and its students. God, I thank you for this board and their continued commitment to public education. I pray that as they make decisions, God, decisions, God they will seek your will. Uh, that everything they do, they will do for your glory uh, and your purpose, God. Uh, you give wisdom abundantly to those who ask God, and I pray uh, that you grant wisdom to anyone that asks. Thank you for the staff of Course Can ISD and their calling of public education and pouring into the future of the future generations. I pray that everything they do reflects your glory, your grace, and your love to our students, uh, and they will be a, a mirror of you, God. I thank you for the students of Course Can ISD and pray for your continued blessing upon them, their families. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to go a little different than what's in your handout for the sake of uh, letting our friend from TASB get back to Austin. <laughs> we're going to uh, we're going to go to seven. We're going to move to seven A real quick. So the consideration and possible approval of entering into a contract with TASB for Executive Search Services. Okay. Well, thank you very much for the opportunity. One good thing is, is I don't live in Austin, so I live in Waco. So thank you. Uh, not too far from you whatsoever. But I, I was in Austin earlier today. Uh, my name is George Kazanis, and it really is a pleasure to be here today to talk with you about TASB and our superintendent search process and proposal to you tonight. I have to say, though, that I certainly am sad uh, for Dr. Frost and her retirement. She's been a wonderful mentor and friend and colleague along the way. Uh, for me, myself, as a, as a former superintendent. Uh, great loss to the community, but I'm so excited for you, Diane, and what's ahead of you in your future. 
uh, to the Corsicana Board again. Uh, congratulations on your TASA Board of the Year honor. Uh, you can tell from the opening statement read uh, this evening your commitment to excellence and your commitment to uh, your students and your commitment to good governance. So thank you so much for the, for the pleasure of being here. As I said, my name is George, uh, George Kazanis, and I have been with TASB now one year. Before that, I served in public schools for 32 years. I was a school superintendent, 24 of those. I uh, served in China Spring ISD in the Waco area. Then I moved out to Wichita Falls and served that district, and then came back and retired from uh, Waco Midway ISD. And so again, I uh, really feel like that uh, I've embraced this new role with TASB. After I began my role as Division Director of Field Services, um, they, uh, Mr. Butch Feltner retired uh, as the Division Director of Executive Search Services and we combined the divisions together and I was asked to lead both of those and so I'm really really excited about that that opportunity so again thank you thank you very very much I do have a short PowerPoint to present to you tonight also I believe Dr. Frost laid out to you a handout there a, a packet of information that I can go over in a little bit more detail as we begin this presentation Again, I introduce myself to you. Uh, also, that will be assigned, to, if we are hired this evening, will be Dr. Marion Strauss. Marion Strauss is over 10 plus years uh, working in, at TASB and in the search process. She's also a former superintendent, retired superintendent, worked in districts such as Wimberley, Pine Tree, and, and, and such. And so I'm really excited to join Marion and bring her along to help us in this process here at Corsicana. <clears throat> so why uh, executive search services? Why ESS? Uh, as you can see there, I put photos of our team. This is our team of field services. And so one of the benefits when we combine the division of field services and executive search is that we just broadened our scope across Texas. These are former, uh, former superintendents. They have been with TASB from just a few months to uh, 10 plus years. And they serve all across Texas. But one of the things about them is, is uh, as you can see there, they all, all have over 30 years of experience in public education, but they are also the boots on the ground. They're the boots on the ground all across Texas. Each one is assigned a certain education service center area. Many of them have more than one area so that we cover the entire state of Texas. So certainly they call on school districts about the products, services, things of that nature regarding TASB, but they also attend um, superintendent meetings. They also attend any regional school board meetings. And so they really are out and about and are the voice of TASB as well as the listening ears of TASB and now they're they're full-time assisting me in the executive search process too so you get that uh, with with uh, with TASB in terms of a, a statewide presence um, TASB started doing this back in 1988 at the requ request of members of course the Ken ISD is a member of TASB we are your association and it was asked uh, back in 1988 to do search services and so again we uh, have done more than 800 of these getting close to more close to a thousand different different searches since that time. And so we are the most experienced search firm uh, in the state of Texas, and we're very proud of that. We will support and collaborate with you throughout this entire process uh, because we are your school board association. Uh, we certainly have a process, but we certainly are open and have ideas and can make this as unique as possible to, to your district. That does not mean we have a one, one size fits all. Uh, we're open to that. We take your suggestions, we take your feedback, and we want to be here to serve you as best we can. Uh, and then, of course, maybe different than some of our competitors, our fee is all inclusive. No hidden costs whatsoever. You have the, the cost of it, and it's all inclusive. There is no extra billing for travel time, things of that nature. So just wanted you to, to know that. So the, uh, the search kickoff. Uh, if in different districts, sometimes we are hired initially, uh, and then we come back and talk about a planning meeting. We can also do that today. I think Dr. Frost had a tentative timeline uh, provided to you. If you look at your packet, I did put one in there. If we are uh, uh, chosen as your search firm, it's the very first sheet on the right of your packet. And again, kicking that off tonight, uh, this is what we talk about in terms of a planning meeting. And we like to be sure uh, before we even begin the process, 
of course at the board it's committed to the different dates because as you all know it is the most important decision that's ahead of you. As a school board has said in the opening uh, remarks by Dr. Brown about good governance, you certainly set the budget, you certainly uh, set policy, you certainly set tax rates, but you also hire the superintendent and you have a huge responsibility ahead of you. So you'll be spending a lot of time together in, along this process. But that's why we, we put the dates to, to be sure that you may not have a conflict. I firmly believe that I need all of you here uh, during this process. We want to be sure everyone is on the same page, particularly during that interview process, first and second rounds, and that, that you are committed to that. So as you can see from um, uh, the, the, the uh, timeline that I provided to you, we're looking at um, reviewing applications on March the 18th. So that's certainly after your spring break. It is certainly after a majority of Texas spring breaks. It gives candidates that opportunity even during breaks to finish up the last bit to, to apply to a school district. Um, so as you can see, that was on Friday, March the 15th. We'll be here on the 18th to talk about that. And then looking at our interview schedule would be that last full week of March, starting March 25th, 26th, 27th. That is, is fluid depending upon how many candidates that you decide to come in for the interview. We just like to set the dates so that you have those uh, there for you. Um, one of the things we all offer is a site visit. Many uh, boards uh, choose to visit the, the, the home district of a candidate uh, just to get a better feel for where they're coming from, maybe ask a few questions, have an opportunity to meet some key people, key personnel in their district. So we have that included if needed. And then uh, we, we have slated a vote to to, to name your loan finalists on March the 28th, Friday, March 28th, with a vote to hire. Remember, the uh, it is a state law of 21-day waiting period, and that's why you see the vote, uh, and, and when you issue a contract is Monday, April the 22nd. The superintendent report certainly is negotiable, but we certainly suggest that first of June. Uh, starting today of February the 19th, all candidates then would see a timeline like this and I think it's very reasonable for them to expect your candidate to come in that, that month of June. I think um, in terms of Dr. Frost's retirement and departure, uh, some transition would be very, very welcomed and I think important for your next superintendent. So that's um, that's that's where we are. The, the last item, the last two items there about qualifications and characteristics as well as community involvement. If you look behind the timeline, that just wanted to show you a sample. By no means, uh, we certainly can discuss this at a future meeting, but what we have found in terms of our research, in terms of our look, work with 800 districts, that these six things are some of the major components of the superintendency. So if you look at that, of course, I don't think anybody could argue that you need an effective communicator, correct? So that's one of the qualifications. So on the right-hand side of your packet, I apologize if you haven't found it. Did you find, everybody find it okay? Okay, I got one here too. It says qualifications and characteristics. So you see the effective communicator and then of course uh, a leader with a track record of curriculum, monitoring academic performance. You see a, a, a superintendent able to work in partnership with the board, building a candor, trust, and cooperation. Financial managers so critical, particularly in this day and age of school finance and what's going down in Austin and, and how we balance our budgets. Uh, a visionary implementing instructional technology, innovative strategies in today's classroom. And then finally, a problem solver. Uh, so these are many, many skills, broad skills that we hope to teach our young people in schools, but again, more advanced here as your CEO, as your superintendent of schools. And so uh, again, well, we'd certainly like to, to show you that. That's just, we have, uh, of course, many more aspects to the superintendency, but these seem to always rise to the top and, and can help us along the way. The community involvement aspect of this, uh, if you'll notice back to the timeline, is as soon as uh, TASB is hired as your search firm, then we can work with your IT department to post an online survey. The online survey is just to gather information that can help guide you all as a board in the selection of your next superintendent. Not telling you who to hire, but, but what, what community members are thinking. Like for example, what's going well in your district? You like to be sure you affirm what programs, initiatives, things of that nature that are going very well, that 
you'd like to continue in Corsican ISD. The second thing could be maybe what are some challenges ahead? Broad challenges. What are some initiatives? What are some ideas does your community have for for the next individual and, and this board to work on. Um, the third thing, though, is, is asking about what are traits, characteristics, qualifications of your next superintendent. And we simply ask those questions. So we like to do it online because of uh, uh, the op opportunity to gather as much information as possible. But I am more than happy to come. I think you'll notice on your timeline, I'd be happy to come back. I believe I have that for fe tentatively in February 27th to do a community. As you know, many community members may not be as comfortable with an online survey. They may like to, to just talk and be in person. They may like to hear that. And so we come in and I generally, generally suggest at least having two different sessions. One for your faculty and staff so I can we can listen to them separately uh, after school one day and, and, and gather that information from them. And then maybe and then have a community uh, session that evening, maybe 6, 6.30 at night so people can come in. Or we could have one at lunchtime as well. We can do two community, one at, at lunch if that's better and one in the evening, just trying to be as accommodating as we can. But that's your choice as a board, uh, how, how you would like to go forward. Any questions so far? As far as the, mm -hmm. uh, once the, I guess, what is the time frame So that's today's the 19th. So tomorrow, if we are hired, we would start working to get that posted as soon as possible in all the different channels. And then the application is midnight on Friday, March the 15th. Okay. And what channels do you all we certainly use our websites, but we also use uh, statewide as, uh, websites through TASA, TASA's website. We, we can use Texas ISD's website and post. We also can post because we're uh, affiliated with a national group of, of um, superintendent searches, and so we can post on their websites as well. Uh, many of them then go to, to other school board types associations across the nation. But predominantly, superintendents are looking in Texas at TASA. They're looking at TASB's website, uh, and they're looking at Texas. ISD. But the other thing about my team is understand that then they announce these openings. They meet regionally once a month with superintendents at their regional meetings and part of their report is to talk about openings across Texas. And so they stand up and talk where they have a written report and so we do get it into the hands of every single superintendent at one of those meetings too. So it's both word of mouth like that and as well as formal channels. Okay. So um, during the search, what we're doing is this, you, you already asked, answered, and f thank you so much for that, for the first part, how we advertise, how we, rec how we recruit. Recruiting is, again, from my team, having a large team like that across Texas, having contacts. I get asked a lot of times, I'll have lunch with individuals that are interested in the superintendency. Uh, I meet them, we talk about it, that's kind of a pre-screening, if you will. We certainly have groups, uh, I mean, others that have applied from TASB that we have uh, their, their information. Uh, so it's just a myriad of those that are aspiring and we're looking for their first superintendency, as well as those that are very successful where they are and looking for uh, the next opportunity to be a superintendent in a larger system like, like, like Corsicana. So the, the pool is, is, is quite large, both of aspiring as well as sitting superintendents. Uh, one of the things in our application that's a little different from some others is the fact that we do have a video component. We have a system uh, called VidCruiter that the applicant starts their application in and it's secured. It's, uh, it's a third party, if you will, in terms of their confidentiality of the information. But one of the things that boards have told me that they really enjoy is the fact that we do ask some questions and they're asked to ask those and you get to see the uh, the short recording of the questions. Maybe three to four questions, a couple of minutes apiece, doesn't take too, too much time. But it's just a window into that individual. So you as a, as a board member can, can see that video of them before you decide and select your candidates to interview. So that'll be so open to you. The questions that they're asked It's a videoed. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. So are the questions uh, is that something that y'all determine yes. We can do both. Yeah, we could do both. We look at these qualifications and characteristics that are there and kind of ask some questions along that, or we could, we could tailor it. You just like I said, we can work with you however however you like to do that. But that is your initial 
uh, again opening if you will into the into, into this individual and you also can tell how they handle the time frame that they have because they must complete it within I uh, believe it's two minutes a question things like that and if they're poised and how well they can answer the question in that shorter period things like that so it certainly helps you and one of the things too is that you do own all all of the and access to all of the applicants that is something that we will individualize that for the boards some boards may want us to help you with that in determining the top candidates to, to interview most boards prefer to have open access to all of the candidates and then we come in and then I come in with you and we have a, a, a meeting that you do receive board credit for going through that process three hours of credit and we go through that process and, and have a process for you all to determine your top candidates. We recommend six. You can have, we've had as many as eight before. That's just up to each individual school board uh, members to make your decision with that. During the interview process, uh, we, do, we, we handle all of the scheduling. You do not do that. We handle that uh, through that application system called VidCruiter. We schedule it. We have a very fair process for them. As you can imagine, candidates are curious of am I first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, where they fall. It's open. It all goes out at the same time. Then they have a window to sign up for a time. But we, we take care of, of all of that, all of the calls. We take care of the calls of those that are invited the first round. We take care of the, of the calls of those that are not asked back for the second round as well as calling those for the second round. When you name your top or want to talk to your top candidate, that's up to you. Some boards want us to tell, ask that person. Many boards like to call them themselves when they're offering a position. So we can certainly work with you all in that, in that area however, however you decide. We also work with you uh, for a site visit. One of the things I was telling Ms. Harrison earlier today was though that your key person, administrative assistant to the superintendent, will also receive a process book from us that has information about agenda postings and how to post, wording, things of that nature, just guides and things along the way so she doesn't have questions um, about making sure that we, you know, we post correctly whenever you have these meetings that are coming up to either meet with me as a consultant or having the actual interviews, how to post for the loan finalist, how to post for the uh, naming and hiring of the contract we have a process book that we make sure gets in the hands of your key person here in the district okay final selection and so again this this is just the first two we've already talked about and you know there's 21 days after naming a loan finalist before you hire but one of the things that I'm proud about TASB that I am excited to be a part of is a transition workshop meaning after your superintendent is hired we recommend a team of eight transition workshop ideally about 60 days two months after your superintendent has been on the job just to come together let's talk let's see how things are going let's bring in any uh, expectations and things of that nature to be sure everyone is is operating on the same page you want to start off right why wait why let something fester too long uh, and so you jump in there you of course you get your training again uh, board training with it but you also have that opportunity for a consultant with uh, including myself plus one one from the board development consulting team uh, to come in and we can visit with you about that and tailor it. We can visit with your board president and your new superintendent and talk about some of the things that we'd like to include on that agenda to talk about. So we're really happy to do that. And of course, along the way, there's always support. There's always support for the superintendent and always support for the board after TASB. One of the guarantees we have is three years that they on the job. If not, then we will come back and work with you. If there's any chance that someone leaves before that, we want to be sure that this individual, our, our track record is over 80% of the candidates are there five plus years. So we're, we're proud of that. But we will come back if, if something were to occur. It's not a perfect process, as you all know, interviewing and hiring, uh, but we have a, a pretty strong track record in this. These are just some testimonials from a couple of districts. They're in your packet as well. They're on the back of your packet there if you'd like to look at those at a later time of, of the services that we have done. One of the things I wanted to highlight here are, of course, doing some searches in the Region 12 area. As I mentioned to you, I would be so excited to do this for Corsicana because I live less than an hour away from you. I've uh, been through Corsicana many times and have been a part of Region 12 and worked with Diane for many, many years there in Midway. So I would, it would be an honor for me. But those are some districts that we have worked with in um, the Region 12 Waco area. Of course, their Temple in Waco in the past. But currently, though, I wanted to include to show you 
23-24 school year, we serve districts as large, as you can see, Arlington of about 50,000 students. We just placed a superintendent uh, doing the search for Arlington ISD, as well as, uh, as you can see, as small as it's Goldthwaite. We're about to, <clears throat> they're next week naming their lone finalist in Goldthwaite. And so that has five, 500 plus students, and we've done even smaller than that. So as you can tell, we will tailor this, we will individualize your search based on your needs as a district, as well as your size of a district and what's most important to you. Um, I personally worked and led the shirt Cibolo Universal City of about 15,000 students and uh, just talking to that superintendent today trying to schedule their transition workshop and so really excited to work with them. Uh, Bernie closed in December. Brenham, we're still in process and in progress with Brenham, kind of a little bit smaller than you all but again different districts that we've worked with. Okay, so let me see anything else that I have missed. I just want to always reiterate to the fact that we are your association. We are, you are part of TASB and we work for you. And it's from the school board's perspective. This process now is from this, a school board member's perspective of going about it. And so we want to serve you and we want to assist you and we want to customize this as however you feel is needed for your district. But um, you have a lot. You make the job easy uh, as, a, as a consultant uh, because of the good work that's been accomplished here in Corsicana ISD. I think this is would be a wonderful opportunity for a candidate and I'm very very excited and proud maybe to have the opportunity to work with all of you to get to know you a little bit better and to help you find that perfect person uh, to replace Dr. Frost. Any questions? As far as the fee for your service, is that a flat fee or is it yes. based on? It's based on ADA in terms of we, we look at the size of districts but, but traditionally we keep them below $10,000 and your fee I believe I quoted was 9500 and it's flat. The only additional fee sometimes that we, we suggest that you reimburse is during the second round interviews if you have candidates that come in and they drive from afar and they have a hotel room or something like that we do suggest that. We do not suggest and we tell candidates in the first round though that's not that's just their responsibility but only when you invite people in and that's something that, about that I, the first round and second round are definitely different I'll just share real quickly the first round we will work together when you select your top candidates the second half of that board workshop is then deciding on your questions deciding what you want to ask candidates so we will go through that that is very scripted though when you get to the first round all of you will ask the same questions uh, each in you uh, individually will ask the same question to the top candidates each time it will be timed and, and then you'll make uh, your selection of which ones you want to invite back the second round is totally different the second round is can be different for each of your finalists can be more of a conversation can be more of tell me more about what you told me in the first round you can ask more follow-up questions uh, we can help you with that too but that's that's an opportunity to really get to know that individual in a different in a different light we suggest a reception maybe an opportunity to meet the candidate spouse or family however you decide it can be just a quick um, cookies and punch or it could be a, a, a light meal however you decide to do that but we have found boards have really enjoyed that have, has been really um, eye-opening to them to have that opportunity just to meet uh, the person more in an informal setting before uh, the interview and before you make your final choice I always say this the first round you just can't fall in love on the first date it's second round is so critical to bring that individual back because it's an opportunity for you to drill down a little bit further uh, with some follow-up questions and to, just to learn, learn maybe they told you something they had done in their district as a superintendent or in their district as an assistant superintendent but they they realize they have 90 minutes and so they can't elaborate but then you can say elaborate more on that intervention program you mentioned in your district what were the results and then you can go and, and, and learn more about it for example Absolutely. Yes, you do. <laughs> you have a great track record. Yes, you do. And so, uh, again, thank you for that. Thank you. But you're exactly right, uh, Ms. Kelly, exactly right. 
If there's no further questions, I'll entertain a motion to hire TASB. I move to approve the agreement with TASB Executive Search Services. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve to hire TASB Executive Search Services. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it. And we will enter in a contract with Exe TASB Executive Search Services. I'm going to get to work right away. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I gave him Thank you, George. Thank Appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Okay. We are going to go into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01. Thank you. All right. We have re resumed from closed session uh, as an action. As a result of closed session, we have received a resignation letter from Trustee Blackard. And as a result of that, I'll take entertain a motion. I make a motion that we accept Leah Blackard's resignation from the CSD School Board effective immediately. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept Leah Blackard's resignation from the school board effective immediately. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it and we will accept her resignation effective immediately. Okay. Now we're going to move into the discussion concerning potential board vacancy including a special election. So we're going to have a discussion about that. I'm going to open that up to all of us. So if you want me to just intro that, um, the choices that are open to the board right now are to um, choose someone and name somebody to fill that position or to hold a special election. Um, given the timeline on Ms. Blackford's resignation, this election would be held simultaneous, simultaneously with the board election, with the board um, seat election on the 5th of November, I'm sorry, of May. Um, however, in order to do that, we will need to have um, have a meeting on Friday, which is a deadline to call the special election. So if the board wants to do it that way, we'll have to have a, a quick meeting on Friday just to call that. And that's a decision that you probably need to make tonight if you want me to have that posted tomorrow, 72 hours Friday, prior to Friday. Also want to make it clear that for anyone who is currently who has currently filed to run for the board, that that is a position that they could withdraw from the place three that they filed for and then reapply in this position. However, if you do that and let's say you're elected into this position, you would need to run again in May of 2025 because that's when Ms. Blackard's um, position would be up for election. So it's only filled for that um, for that one year from May of 2024 to May of 2025 when you have to run again. All right. Um, as a board, we all know we do a lot of training. Um, and by opening up a position uh, during the special election, um, that would allow two new board members plus a new superintendent at that time to go to training together. Um, and I think to keep the unity of our board and um, to make us strong, I think doing training together at that time versus bringing on another board member later on in the year, um, I just think starting off with training together and um, reinforcing us as a, a group together would be very beneficial. And I agree with what, uh, I agree with 
Kathy is saying, um, being a board trustee is so important. Um, it does take a lot of training. Um, the, the years that I have been serving, I have taken a lot of training and it's helped me so much with learning my role as a board member. Um, I don't take this job lightly. Um, I, I'm all about the kids, I'm all about our district and everybody knows that. So um, I think that we should you know, so, you know, select, well open it up to an election and let those that want to apply, those that want to run, let them run. Because if you're serious about this job, you're going to do it. Not a personal agenda thing, but you're going to do it. Not for a title, but you're going to do it. That's why I did it. And so I take it serious. And so I hope that whoever decides to run, runs, runs, the, runs, the, runs for the board for the right reason. And that's my two cents. Okay, so Mr. President, let me just make sure I've got this. It sounds like I need to um, ask Ms. Harrison to post a meeting for Friday um, in order for the board to consider calling a, um, a, calling a special election to fill this position. Okay, we'll do so that. Is, is everyone good with that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, what uh, time? Uh, five o'clock. Well, Friday? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be, I'm gonna give a funny. About five in the morning. But yeah. <laughs> hey, okay, so we we know that Barbara and Kamar cannot be here. Uh, Jamie, Brad, Kathy, can you be here at 8 a.m.? 8 a.m. is a great time. <laughs> 8 a.m. Okay, because I have to go take an applicator license to be to to spray chemicals on our farm that afternoon in Waco. So. All right, that's the, that's the country part of me. All right, all right. We'll meet at 8 a.m. Friday. How's that sound? Will that will that qualify for the 72 hours? We have to post it at 8 a.m. in the morning. But if Meryl leaves it on my desk, we'll have it posted. Meryl, at 8 you in the got morning. that? <laughs> I just want to make sure it's Meryl. Is that doable? Okay. Do you have to make a, is there a motion made on it? Can't make it a motion. Okay, so we'll so we'll meet 8 a.m. Friday. We'll have a quorum, and we'll and we'll vote to call a special election. Spe to call a special election. Okay. Or not. You could vote not to. I'll vote not to. Okay. All right. Moving on. No superintendent report. Okay. All right. We have consent agenda. I have a request. Um, can we pull uh, February 12th, 2024 board <coughs> meeting minutes and bring those back to the next meeting? Certainly. Okay. Okay. So we will need to table the... You want to table the minutes then? You can approve the you can approve the consent agenda with the exception of the meeting minutes. Okay, let's just let's approve it because we have to we have to accept the TASB and the things like that. So and I would approve the consent agenda. Other than that, the board the board meeting minutes. Okay, Do I have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept the consent agenda, but pull the board meeting minutes. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we've approved the consent agenda, except for the board meeting minutes. Ms. Harrison, is there an audience for guests tonight? All right, thank you very much. Okay, we are now going to go to closed session again, as permitted by Texas Government Code 551.01.